Losing the capability to launch payloads into orbit is undoubtedly a significant setback for any aerospace organization, and Europe, traditionally considered to be among the top players alongside the US and Russia, now faces this harsh reality. In such a predicament, their only recourse is to seek assistance from external sources. This is where the Falcon 9, the world's most renowned launch vehicle, once again demonstrates SpaceX's influence by coming to Europe's aid. But why has Europe found itself in this current situation? Can the Falcon and I truly rescue them? And what sets SpaceX apart from Europe's aerospace industry and the global space sector as a whole? These are the questions we'll explore in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX has undeniably been making waves in the aerospace industry since the start of this year. Most notably, they successfully conducted the third flight of their colossal rocket, Starship. In addition to their achievements with Starship, SpaceX is steadily advancing towards their target of 148 flights with the Falcon 9 rocket. Notably, in April and July, Falcon 9 is slated to launch two missions, each carrying two Galileo satellites for the European Space Agency, or ESA, or ESA. For those unfamiliar, the Galileo satellites will serve a similar function to the GPS system. So what makes these two launches stand out? Well, there are two significant factors at play in this deal. Firstly, ESA will be paying up to approximately $195 million for these two launches, which translates to more than $97 million per flight. This is a significant increase from the current price of $67 million per launch. Why is ESA willing to pay this premium? The second factor holds the answer to this question. When discussing ESA, the Ariane family of rockets often comes to mind. Indeed, these rockets have achieved significant milestones, particularly the Ariane 5, which completed 117 flights between 1996 and 2023, with 115 of them being successful, showcasing a high level of reliability. However, the Ariane 5 was officially retired after its flight on July 5th of 2023. In order to continue launching missions, ESA and the Ariane group developed the Ariane 6. This new version was conceptualized in the early 2010s, the aim of not only replacing the Ariane 5, but also enhancing Europe's aerospace competitiveness on a global scale, particularly against SpaceX's Falcon 9. However, after more than a decade of development, the performance of this rocket has been disappointing for ESA. The first flight of the Ariane 6 was originally scheduled for 2020. However, due to persistent technical issues, more than four years have passed, and the rocket has yet to take off. The inaugural launch has been postponed once again, now slated for the summer of this year. This delay not only incurs economic ramifications, but also hampers Europe's ability to execute its plans as intended. In a parallel situation, other alternatives for ESA have also faced setbacks. Apart from the Arian rocket family, Europe possesses the Vega C rocket. Unfortunately, the Vega C encountered a failure in late 2022 and remains grounded until now. According to ESA's revised schedule, the next Vega C flight is anticipated to occur no sooner than September of this year. Despite plans for numerous subsequent flights, none have been designated to launch the Galileo satellites. Another option for ESA, Russia is also presenting challenges. Historically, Europe often relied on Russia to execute its missions. Utilizing Soyuz rockets, Russia was once regarded as the most dependable entity for launching payloads. However, current circumstances prevent Europe from utilizing Russian vehicles. Firstly, they halted cooperation with Russia due to conflicts stemming from the Russia-Ukraine war. Even if cooperation were to continue, opting for Soyuz launches would pose significant risks at present. Over the past year, this rocket has experienced several leaks during ISS missions. Most recently, Russia's launch system encountered issues leading to the abort of the Soyuz MS-25 flight just 21 seconds before liftoff. It can be argued that after decades of development, Russian rocket technology has become outdated. Therefore, selecting a Russian rocket for launch would also entail risks for ESA. In such circumstances, Europe finds itself with only one viable option, seeking assistance from the United States, the foremost aerospace powerhouse globally. However, ESA's choices are are somewhat limited. Each Galileo satellite weighs approximately 732 kilograms, rendering small rockets like Rocket Lab's Electron unsuitable for the task. When considering larger rockets, ESA faces a choice between SpaceX's Falcon rockets and ULA's Vulcan. Yet Vulcan's recent success with its inaugural flight in January and the upcoming launch of Dream Chaser in April may not instill enough confidence in ESA to fully trust the platform. Hence, ESA's collaboration with SpaceX becomes a necessity, despite the fact that SpaceX was once seen as a competitor. Indeed, SpaceX's extensive experience in satellite launches makes them a viable partner for ESA's endeavors. Falcon 9, SpaceX's dependable workhorse rocket, continues to set new records for launches each year. In 2022, it completed 60 flights, a number that surged to 91 in 2023. With its remarkable launch frequency, Falcon 9 has played a pivotal role in bolstering SpaceX's satellite system, Starlink. 
which surpassed the milestone of 6,000 satellites in mid-March. This achievement stands as a testament to Falcon 9's prowess in satellite deployment. In addition to Falcon 9, SpaceX boasts Falcon Heavy, a robust vehicle designed to launch numerous vital satellites and spacecraft, including Arabsat, Biasat, Jupiter-3, Psyche, and NASA's GOESU in the near future. While Falcon Heavy is capable of meeting ESA's requirements, the mass of each Galileo satellite just over 700 kilograms makes Falcon 9 the more suitable choice for these missions. This isn't the first instance where ESA has turned to SpaceX for payload launch missions. Historically, while Ariane 5 was still in operation, SpaceX assisted ESA in launching payloads such as the Sentinel-6A satellite in November of 2020 and the Euclid te Telescope in July of 2023. Moreover, European astronauts frequently participate in crew missions to the International Space Station launched by Falcon rockets. ESA's General Director Josef Oschbacher commented on Falcon 9 following the successful Euclid mission, stating, SpaceX has been very proactive, very quick, very professional in providing this launch service, and I'm very happy now that this has been carried out successfully. This positive experience underscores the rationale behind ESA's decision to select Falcon 9 for its two Galileo satellite launch missions, despite the higher cost, as mentioned previously. Once again, this highlights SpaceX's supremacy within the aerospace industry. With its two rockets, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, SpaceX conducted an impressive 96 flights in 2023 alone. This resulted in the deployment of approximately 1,200 tons of payload into orbit, as emphasized by Elon Musk during the company talk at Starbase in January. In comparison, the rest of the world managed to launch only about 350 tons, less than 3.4 times the payload capacity achieved by SpaceX. As SpaceX aims to achieve 148 launches this year, I anticipate that the disparity between SpaceX and other aerospace entities will widen even further. Not only does SpaceX conduct a high volume of launches, but their rockets also boast remarkable reusability, a feat many organizations, including ESA, have yet to achieve. The two components reused most frequently by SpaceX are the booster and fairing. Falcon boosters have now surpassed the milestone of 280 landings and reuses, with four boosters achieving the milestone of 19 landings each. The fairings have also been recovered over 300 times, enabling SpaceX to save over a billion dollars in production costs. Furthermore, SpaceX is gearing up to introduce another game changer to the orbital launch arena, Starship. Despite encountering setbacks such as the unsuccessful landing phase during the March 14th flight, Starship has made significant strides. With three launches completed in less than a year, SpaceX is pushing forward with plans to launch Flight 4 in May, with the goal of launching six to nine Starships this year. Compared to Falcon 9, Starship will offer even greater reusability. Both stages can be reused multiple times, potentially reducing future turnaround times to just a few hours. This extensive reusability is projected to drive down the cost of Starship launches to a mere 2 million US dollars, significantly lower than the current average. The growing disparity between ESA and SpaceX is evident. ESA's long-standing weakness have led to a dependence on SpaceX for launch services. Even with the eventual operationalization of Ariane 6, this reliance is unlikely to dissipate, as the new rocket may struggle to match the capabilities of SpaceX's vehicles. In contrast, SpaceX maintains a trajectory of continuous development, building on their successes year after year. With ongoing advancements, SpaceX remains at the forefront of the space race, ready to achieve further milestones and solidify their leadership position in the industry. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX. And until next time, keep looking up.